Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. I finally have a decent layout update for you. There were some things that were holding me back from making progress on the layout. I finally put some of those things aside and made some progress. First, that whole middle section of the layout that I was convinced I was gonna squeeze the city into wasn't gonna happen. It just, every time I tried to put stuff in there, it just wasn't deep enough. Uh, the table's only three feet deep in that spot and I've got four tracks, so I don't have a lot of depth to work with. And anything I was doing, I just wasn't happy with. On my trip out to Long Island, Stephen's layout inspired me for the center section. He has a yard to the side of his layout and on it is a really nice coaling tower and an engine house. And it got me thinking about the similarly sized space that I have in the middle of the layout. So using what he had done as inspiration, I totally re-envisioned the middle part of the layout. Another thing that's been holding me back is the large span that I have the two old Lionel bridges covering with a support in the middle. I hope to build a custom bridge at some point, but that just doesn't seem to be happening. It's a four foot span, I believe, and I need something that can span that without support in the middle. I was just poking around the garage the other day and I found a piece of metal that I had that could span that space and support the bridges. It might bounce a little when the train goes over it, but it's not gonna come down, it's nice and sturdy. So by adding that and removing the support in the middle, it really opened up that section of the layout to finally make some progress with. In this section here, I've been trying to squeeze buildings and do it in a way that would actually make it look like part of a bigger city. And like I said, nothing I did made me happy with the way it looked. Uh, so I didn't make any progress. I kept starting and stopping, starting and stopping, and I wasn't getting anywhere. After I visited Steven's layout and I saw what he had did with a similar kind of shallow and long space, I thought, I really like that. I've got to do something like that on my layout. So what I wanted to do was get in an engine shed, a couple of tracks, and a few little details, and then worry about all the other stuff after that. I tried to 3D print an engine house. And just because the size of O-Gage, I couldn't print anything that was going to be big enough. Uh, and I couldn't find any files where the walls were sectioned in such a way that would enable me to print a bunch of them. And then there's the fact that printing something of this size would just take too long. So I've decided to do more of a hybrid type of a build, and I'm going to build it out of either foam core or something similar, and I'll 3D print windows, doors, detail pieces, chimneys, all that sort of stuff. So all that detail stuff I can print. It will be a lot quicker, more efficient and better than if I tried to make it out of foam core. I took some measurements from some engine houses I tried to print where it didn't work out because just the size of them, and I went from there. So that's how I got the spacing across the front was that was the largest thing I could print on the 3D printer was this face. And I printed a part to fit there and then realized that's as much as I could do. So I used that as a starting point for this engine house and then just looked up dimensions and also just placed a bunch of engines on track to see how long I wanted the engine house to be so that I could fit engines inside of it. What I've come up with is this design. It's about two feet long, I think. We've got a nice shed on the side here. I'm going to do some more mocking up, then I'll start over with new foam core. So this space is two tracks. Uh, they run from here to the other end uh, and there's a switch at the far end with a small track on the other side so that I can run anything like a smaller diesel or a smaller steam engine, I can run out and then back on the other track. Part of the idea for this was that I had somewhere to put some of the engines that I use frequently and that I don't feel like putting on shelves or in boxes. So I figured if I could keep a few on here, that would be great. Right here, I've split each track into a block so I can park an engine here in the shed and an engine in front of it, uh, conventional, because if they're uh, TMCC or something, it doesn't matter if there's blocks or not, but if I'm parking conventional things, I want to have blocks. So, so I can park an engine on each side and then an engine on each side of this part. 
Uh, All together, I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, I think six blocks just on this two track run. Because this outer track does not stop here. It actually goes into the mountain and just out the other side. So from here back, I have my E8s parked and then my F7s here. So just, just looking at it, you can't tell it's that deep. And I like that little hidden staging kind of an area. It, it makes me happy. On this side, I have a building, a separate display track that's powered for a caboose. I have my beacon tower at the other end. And then to hide the switch, uh, it's a manual switch. Uh, and to, so to hide the mechanism of it, I took this building and I cut this side out of it, cut some of the tabs off so that it fits over the switch machine. That way you won't see it. And this door actually lines up pretty well where I can just kind of put my finger in there and flip it. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. This section back here that was the viaduct, uh, I think it's going to be like a concrete block wall or stone wall uh, so that you don't see the outer loop. I don't really want the viaduct back there, at least not across the whole space. I do plan on keeping it in this area here. And this spot here, I was thinking of being viaduct, but I think I'm going to use a girder bridge in that spot uh, to span the tracks and then onto the viaduct and then onto this area with the retaining wall. Behind the engine shed, you can kind of see that section that's blocked off and that will be painted probably black or blend in with the mountain, uh, depending how I do it. But that, that's where the track exits the back of the engine house and goes into the mountain. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll camouflage that somehow. Back here behind the shop, I have a shed and some random parts and pieces, uh, a bunch of barrels, some cones, uh, this little shed here that I will detail and put a light in, probably. A tree, outhouse, dinosaur, you know, the basics. I was thinking there needed to be access back here for an old truck. From here, I figured I'd come out and drive down and then leave that section. So I built up this area and then have this foam core here to simulate the retaining wall. I'm going to have to run some trains past it and you know, video it and see how I like it uh, for a more long-term thing. I think the height's a little too much. Uh, the wall will probably be shortened a little bit, but like the engine house, it's kind of a first draft. But I'm excited to see where it goes. Right here, right in the middle between those two bridges is where I just had the large pink chunk of foam supporting them. I've added this metal piece underneath the bridges and it does a pretty good job at supporting it. Uh, it's a little bounce, but that's okay for now, at least until I get something more permanent. But either way, getting that piece out of there really opened up this spot and helped me solidify a vision for the area. So far, I kind of like the depth difference between these three buildings. Uh, I think it adds a lot of depth, a lot of interest, and is probably maybe the way I'll go with it. I printed this water tower. Uh, I don't know if it's going there, uh, but that's a project I've been working on. I have a blinking LED for the top from Evan Designs. I'll be working on that at some point, hopefully before too long. And then I'm just gonna have this road go across the space here. And kind of disappear behind the mountain. And I don't know if I'll kind of mock up a tunnel entrance or something to help hide the fact that the road just stops. I'll then have an intersection and the road will come out this way and off the front of the layout. There will also be a driveway to this parking lot. Uh, that brown building, I don't know, that's just sitting there because I printed it and I was trying to figure out if I wanted to use it or not. Uh, but over here will be a parking lot for the train station. I switched the positions of the water tower and the train station. Uh, this station, I took the base off of it so that I wouldn't have to integrate the base into the layout, uh, but then I decided I wanted to try to print a station. Uh, I figure a station small enough, unlike the engine house, uh, that I might actually be able to print one and print a decent one. So I've started on that project. Until that's done, this train station will stay here. 
Behind the train station to the side of the river, I've got another shack and a pickup truck. I'll be doing something. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure yet. Uh, I still want to do some carving on the river. I was considering some sort of girder bridge instead of the culverts, but for the time being, like I said, it works. Uh, what I was really excited about was finding this footbridge that I could 3D print. Uh, so now I can have a walkway from the station over the dirt road, over the river, over here to a hot dog stand slash park by the river slash rail fan park, whatever. A uh, nice spot. We'll probably have some trees and picnic tables and stuff like that. Nothing has really happened over here because I'm still trying to work in the whole layout extension that would extend another 10 feet to that far wall. Hopefully I can get started on that in the next few months. Uh, hopefully I can get at least a basic table built and I think that would be a lot of fun. There's a lot left to be done, but I'm just really excited about making some progress on something other than mountains. Um, I love the mountains, but I'm, it, to get some buildings and lights and vehicles and details in is just really exciting. If you saw my dirt road over here, you can see how poor that looks. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do some learning here. Uh, it's been quite a while since I've done any sort of scenicing like that. So there's gonna be a little trial and error and a little, uh, multiple attempts probably to do some stuff, but that's fine. I, that's what I love about the hobby. I always saw this space between these two tracks as a dead space and it just, I couldn't envision anything there. So now that I have stuff and there's a purpose to it, I'm just really enjoying it. And it's all I can think about. I want to work on the layout and that's just, that's great because for a long time I haven't wanted to work on the layout. So hopefully over the next month or so, I'll have some more updates for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.